Hi! Welcome to this episode of Early Motherhood. My name is Jocelyn Donovan. I'm the CPNP for Newasa Kandas Winnipeg, and today we're going to talk about good hygiene. So, in baby's first year, there's a few things you have to do to make sure that their bodies are staying healthy. We're going to go through that today. Uh, my colleague, when I told her I was doing this episode, the first thing she said is, oh, gotta talk about wiping between their folds. And I was like, what? <laughs> I had skinny babies, so they didn't have a bunch of rolls or folds. <laughs> but apparently, when um, chunkier babies are eating and milk spills down their necks, it tends to get caught in those little folds around their necks and under their arms. So good practice is after feeds, take a damp cloth and just give them a little wipe in between all the folds to make sure that they stay nice and healthy because otherwise they might start getting a bit of a stinky cheese smell. <laughs> So one of the most important um, elements of hygiene in the first year is taking good care of baby's teeth, even if there aren't any teeth in that mouth yet. So as early as you like or as early as you can, start wiping baby's gums and tongue with a damp wet cloth after feedings and before bed. You can also use a soft finger brush. This is a finger toothbrush, so you just pop this on your finger. As he has very soft bristles here and you can use that to scrub baby's tongue and their teeth if they have any or their gums and it just helps keeping and it just helps keep that bacteria growth down as soon as baby gets a tooth it is important to start brushing regularly while these teeth are not permanent they have an important function Losing teeth to decay can impede their nutrition, speech development, and the adult teeth are more likely to grow in crooked. The best way to prevent tooth loss is to practice good dental hygiene early on. In the first year, use water to wash the gums, and once a tooth appears, you may use a very small amount of toothpaste. This is um, a new recommendation. So they used to say that you should wait until baby is two to start using any fluoridated toothpaste. Um, that has recently changed. The AAPD now recommends uh, using a small sliver of toothpaste about the size of a grain of rice. And you can brush with toothpaste once a day. Make dental care part of your bedtime routine. It'll seem natural in no time. And then your child will have excellent habits for the rest of their life. <music> Diapering is the most repetitive hygiene task in the first year. Every day, baby will need multiple changes. If you're using a high surface, like a change table to change a diaper, make sure you keep a hand on baby at all times. You can get a changing pad with raised edges so baby will be less likely to roll off, but there is no substitute for direct supervision. So let's go through how to change a diaper. Here's baby Moana. She is wearing a diaper that's far too big for her, but that's okay. So if baby has peed, open the diaper and lightly wipe their diaper area with a wet cloth or a baby wipe and discard the wet diaper in the garbage. If baby has pooped, you'll have to clean them a bit more thoroughly. Make sure all of your wipes and a fresh diaper are within arm's reach before you get started. Remember to always wipe from front to back, especially for girls. In case you were wondering, I did melt half a chocolate bar into this diaper for the video. It's not real poop. When I'm done wiping, I put the wipes inside the diaper and roll it all together. That helps keep all the poop together in one place and means you won't get poop all over your garbage. There you go. You're all done and she's ready for a new diaper. When baby's all cleaned up, put on a new diaper. If there's any redness or soreness around their diaper area, you can put on some diaper cream. Personally, I try to use as few products as possible, so I don't use it every day, but only when I see that they're starting to feel sore. You can also consider cloth diapers. So cloth diapers are reusable diapers that you put on baby and then throw in the washing machine and they come out clean and you can use them again. 
it's a big investment to get started, but in the long term, you will save money. Um, disposable diapers do add up over time. Essentially, their diaper is made of absorbent fabric. And when babies start solids and their poops become more solid, you just empty that poop into the toilet, flush it, and then wash the diaper after. When they're still just drinking milk, then you can just wash all that poop. That's fine. You can buy disposable wipes in stores, but some babies are irritated by them. My oldest did not respond well to store-bought wipes, even the sensitive ones. So we actually came up with the system of using rags as wipes. So we take one of these old diaper boxes and we fill it up with rags. So this is a shirt that I bought secondhand. After a couple years, it started fraying and looking really faded and I wasn't going to wear it anymore. So I repurposed it and I cut it up into rags, put it in a container with some water, and now I can use these as disposable or reusable wipes. After diapering, wash your hands and the surface you used. Once baby is old enough to be held over the sink, start washing their hands too with light soap and water. This will help keep them safe and teach them important life skills. Nail clipping is one of the trickier tasks for some families. Those little nails grow fast. Sometimes it feels like you have to cut them every day. Use baby nail clippers to cut long nails, but I want to warn you, some babies really hate having their nails cut. I've tried lots of different methods with my children. I've tried distracting them. You know, I'd have dad do a song and dance in front while I'm trying to clip their nails sitting on my lap. I've tried, you know, letting them, putting them in the high chair and they can eat while I cut their toenails and then hopefully get into their fingernails too. There's a lot of different things you can try. What I have found works the best is to get them interested in cutting their nails. So I mean when they're three months old you're probably not going to be able to get them very interested in it because they just want to squirm around. But when they're a bit older I would kind of make a show out of it. So I'd show them the clippers and sit them down and hold their hand and go oh, one two three clip. and they loved it they thought that was the funniest thing and it got them really involved and now if i bring out the nail clippers they're like you know go for it they like the little performance one two three It's what's worked for me so far, but it's going to be your family and your needs, so whatever works best for you. I've heard of parents trying to cut their kids' nails when they're sleeping. More power to you. If that's what works for you, great. Personally, my kids did not sleep very well and they would have absolutely woken up if I had tried to cut their nails in their sleep, so that wasn't an option for me. So many parents have said that this has happened to them before and it has happened to me where you go to cut your baby's nails and you clip a little bit of their fingertip. It sucks because baby's hurting and they're sad and there's a bit of blood, but it is a very common little injury and baby will be just fine. It shouldn't bleed for too long, but just their skin is so thin at that age and so it does happen. Some people have said what they prefer to do instead of using clippers is to bite the nails if that's what works best for you and keeps baby's nails short. Or you could try using a nail file and file them down a bit. That could help. So it's all about finding what method works best for you and your family. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you learned a little bit and next week we'll be talking about car seat safety. Bye now.